Uh, hi everyone, I am Anastasia and I am watercolor painter. And you may have heard about me as about watercolorist who always paints her daughter. And yes, it's right, I became recognizable due to portrait of a blonde watercolor princess. Yeah. The source of my inspiration uh, is childhood, the magic and wonderful feeling of the world. My daughter is my muse and uh, she's growing and at the same time I am growing as an artist. I make a lot of photos every day. I bring my phone always with me to be able to stop in any moment and take inspiration from any subject I am at. What I do is just not copying the photo, but using my daughter's image to reflect my world view, my feelings. And uh, today I am going to show you all my secrets. I'm going to show you my technique. So let's dive in. Okay, we can start the way I usually start and choose the photo. I have a wonderful photo session that I made one Sunday. Uh, now I will choose the photo, this one. Uh, then I'm drawing a quick sketch just to make the right composition. I am creating a sketch on a sheet of office paper the same size as my future watercolor. I am starting with general shapes and general proportion, gradually creating the details. I am sketching very roughly, approximately, since I only need general proportion. And I will add the necessary details on the watercolor paper itself. Now I need to transfer the sketch to watercolor paper. As you see, the watercolor paper is exactly the same size as the sketch. I transfer the sketch uh, using a light table or rather lamp or a window, this way for example. Um, okay, let's talk about supplies and why I use them. Uh, you know, all materials that I use are high quality. Uh, and why I choose them? Uh, first of all, for drawing in my technique, we need a waterproof plastic tablet, like this. And, of course, we need watercolor paper. Usually I choose 100% cotton watercolor paper, weighting 190 pounds. Uh, this is a thick watercolor paper uh, that allows you to paint in several layers and holds moisture very well. For example, you can choose Saunders Waterford watercolor paper called Press Label called Knot. Of course, you can take paper with the addition of cellulose. The texture of paper is important. I choose paper with medium grain. This is a texture which is between smooth and rough. And choose a paper which keeps moisture inside for a long time. This is my choice for any case and uh, almost every of these watercolors I did on this paper actually. 
The next scene I'm going to tell you is about watercolors. I use watercolors in tubes. My favorite brands are Mijello Mission Gold, Rembrandt, Van Gogh are quite good actually. To create any skin tone, we can use only three colors, as the theory of color tells us. For me, it's yellow, blue and pink instead of red. Let's start from the yellow one. It can be lemon yellow, ochre or transparent green gold pigment. I am squeezing out the pigments on the palette. Uh, the brands is not so important. You can try pigments you have and decide what suits you best. Okay, now I am trying the selected shades. Uh, to create a skin tone, we need a red or pink pigment. Okay, you can take uh, Bright Opera. I am taking red-orange pigment. Or you can also take uh, classic pink King Dawn instead. Now I am drying and mixing yellow and pink shades, but to get any skin color we need blue tone. I am taking a transparent cold blue tint, similar to Intendran blue. I am taking a warmer and darker ultramarine and uh, I am taking mixed shade called lavender. That I added to my palette and mixing uh, colors which is each other and I am getting the variety of skin tones that we need. Using different pigments with different density and transparency, we get different shades. Don't be afraid to experiment. You can see, with just three colors, we get a huge variety of shades. And once again, we need to choose yellow, pink and blue. Okay, we need to choose shades for the environment, for the background. For this, we need darker and more opaque pigments, like burnt sienna, for example. And using these shades together with ultramarine, we can get variety of dark shades. Let's talk about brushes. The choice of brushes is very important for any watercolorist. And this is my favorite brush. The main brush. 
this is uh, a Chinese calligraphic brush and it is a round brush but I use it as a flat making flat shape by squeezing it. I often use a wide flat natural bristle brush and not only for large areas like the ground but for wetting the surface of the paper. And for small details we need a small calligraphy brush or a synthetic brush and we can use middle size flat brush. Uh, let me show you how many different kinds of strokes you can create with these brushes. These four brushes are enough for me for any painting. Okay, let's go to the work. I transferred the drawing to the watercolor paper roughly, and you can transfer only the main lines. Like this. Usually I draw without a pencil sketch, but you can create a more detailed drawing. For my technique it's very important to wet a sheet of paper on both sides. I wet the outer side first, put it on a waterproof tablet and wet the front side. Usually I use white flat brush. Okay, we have to wait a bit and then turn the paper over. And there shouldn't be any bubbles. When the wet paper is glossy, I start. My task is to identify the general shapes. Put warm and cold shades and leave the highlights and paint it. Uh, yes, I work from light shades to dark. I am starting with the cold reflexes from the blue sky. I am taking a bright blue 
color and I am working with a white brush. Blue reflections on the face, hair and shirt are everywhere, more or less. And uh, now I'm adding pink color to the mixture and uh, make white brush strokes along the large shapes. Large forms are the forehead, cheeks, chin, hair, not eyes or eyelashes. Uh, then I'm going to add ochre to my color mix and begin to sculpt uh, large head shapes like forehead, cheekbones, uh, chin. I mix the shades on palette using the chart of colors yellow, blue and pink. On the palette I'm getting a warmer and cooler shades and I'm looking carefully at the reference. Paper is wet enough. Uh, what I pay attention to, it's necessary to leave a highlights on the round forehead on the cheekbone, on the tip of the nose. The upper lip is also bright. I'm not working with the details yet. Uh, the chin is dark, as you see, and uh, the neck too. You can notice that I do not grab the water with a brush, uh, so that the strokes we did before do not flow. I'm going to draw hair. I'm paying attention to overall shape and volume. As you can notice, the hairstyle also has a round shape with the highlight on the top. And while the applied layer is still wet, I can add some details. And uh, I'm adding a dark uh, blue tone to my mixture to receive a uh, colder shade. For this I'm using the pigment called Lavender. The paper is still wet enough, but my brush that I'm using is uh, dry enough. I uh, don't uh, grab any water with my brush. Okay, now I am trying to make some details.
I am adding the necessary tone to the side of the cheek and uh, to the lower part of the chin. Uh, when the paper gets dry, I uh, see it, I wet the edges with a white brush. As soon as the paint on surface stops shining and becomes more and more opaque, I stop touching this area and start to draw surroundings, clothes and hair. Okay, now I'm wetting the edges. My paper is still keeping moisture inside. Uh, now I'm taking just a dry brush and uh, with its help I can make the edges of the brush strokes softer. I'm touching the surface and the surface is dry. So I'm going to continue with the hair. Uh, and with other details, but I won't touch the surface of the face anymore at this step. I'm just adding some details to the hair. The area of uh, the face is absolutely dry, so I can't touch it. Uh, still, yeah, it's too many details for this stage, so I'm going to take uh, my white brush and uh, to draw surroundings.
uh, the background will be dark, so I'm not afraid to draw beyond the pencil. Uh, so the first step is finished and we have to wait. Okay, let's continue. At the first stage we painted the general forms. And now we are going to add the soft volume and create the correct tonal difference. Uh, my paper is wet from the bottom, still, but the surface is absolutely dry. 
and this is important scenes. That's why the layers I did is absolutely safe and uh, I can uh, make new brush strokes. So I'm mixing a bright yellow pink shade, grabbing a lot of water and covering the entire front part of the face, except for the highlights. And now I am softening the edges with squeezed brush. Now I'm wetting the entire surface of the paper and there is a lot of water and little pigment in the brush. And now I'm mixing the purple shade and covering the right part of our painting because it is in the shadow. Uh, you can notice that the upper lip and chin are darker than the forehead. And uh, once again, uh, previous layer should dry out completely. Uh, I'm covering the entire background with the part of the hair. And uh, as a result, we got wet glossy surface on the paper again. The previous layer is safe and we can add the tone we want, the darker shade to the neck, side of the cheek, hair. Uh, it is wet and wet technique actually. I'm adding uh, bright colors to the cheek, painting the rounded shape of the nose. I am adding darker tones where it's necessary. For example, to the bridge of the nose, it is in shadow. I'm emphasizing the round shape of the forehead. I am mixing choosed pigments and adding necessary tone uh, to the side of the cheek and to the neck. As you can see, I'm not grabbing water into the brush, as there are a lot of water on the surface of the paper. I am mixing the desired shade using our set of colors. For, da for darker and richer shades, I use ultramarine, uh, burnt sienna, or dark burgundy pigments like berlin maroon. The paper is still very wet, so you can take your time and draw. You can safely add the desired shade wherever it necessary. The paper is so wet that we get soft volume. I am making the form. As I see, the neck should be darker. I am adding shadows to the under eyes.
if it's necessary, you can remove some strokes with a napkin. It's important for me to keep the white paper where the highlights are. So let's keep drawing. I'm finishing with thin and dark brush strokes, defining the back of the nose, the corner of the lips. The surface of my paper is almost matte and dry.
So I think it's time to stop. The paper is almost dry. I created soft volume and at the next step we will uh, make some details. So this is the most important part of my work in portrait technique. Indeed, in a good portrait it's not the detail that matters, but the overall tone and volume. Good. And I hope that you understand uh, the main idea of my technique. Uh, the paper uh, is almost dry, so we have to wait again. And uh, the next step will be working with the details. So we have to take small brush. I will use my favorite small calligraphic brush and let's continue. I put the photo next to the face to clarify mutual position of facial features. As you remember, I made a very rough pencil sketch. And at this stage I see that some proportions should be adjusted. I'm checking and adjusting the size and proportions of the eyes, nose, lips. I'm using a small brush with very little water and pigment to make thin lines. I'm painting more precisely the contour of the base on the right.
Here I, uh, I'm drawing on the dry surface. The lines are transparent, not dark. Okay, great. I got more accurate face proportions. Okay, I think that for this step it will be enough. Let's continue with the background. So the next step is background. To create a soft and dark background, we need properly prepare our paper. To do this, I usually turn over the dried paper. Take a wide brush and wet the paper from the back side. I'm waiting a little bit and then turn over our paper and start painting the background. I'm going to use these two brushes. And uh, at first I need to paint carefully the strands of hair.
Then I'm using a wide brush, grab a lot of water and first I'm covering some air around the face and hair with a light yellow and purple shade. Then I'm adding darker and rich colors while this area is still wet enough. I'm drawing step by step face surroundings. I, I'm painting first with a light tone then adding darker shades. Here I am using lavender pigment. Um, mixing together with some dark tones like burnt sienna or twilight yellow from Van Gogh. I'm adding the new and new tones, uh, creating soft background. There are a lot of water in this layer. Okay, I need touch the hair from the back of the head, since we need to add a darker tone here and to get soft outline. As you notice, uh, the hairstyle has a round shape and I have to emphasize it. Okay, some more details to the background. Some dark strokes to the hair.
uh, the neck is not illuminated so I'm adding darker shades to this area as well as to the hair and uh, the ear As you know, the neck is usually dark enough. And uh, I'm trying to create soft volume in the hair so that the hairstyle does not look flat. I'm adding uh, the new strokes to the background. This area is uh, dry for now, that's why I should grab enough water with my brush. Uh, now I'm drawing the hair curls. The paper is almost dry. I'm adding some details to the hair uh, because I noticed that this area should be darker. I would like to focus on the face and uh, at this part of the picture the brightest object is the shirt and strands of hair should be at the background. Okay, I think this stage is over, we should rest a bit and understand what to do next.
okay we're almost done and this is the final stage and now I'm going to paint on dry paper on dry surface uh, that's why I'm creating a blue shade grabbing a lot of water and at the same time adding a little tone to the right side of the white shirt and to the background. So I'm generalizing the right side which is in shadow. Uh, so I need to add the missing tone to the right half of the face, to the chin, to the cheek. And uh, I'm grabbing a lot of water because I, the paper is dry and I want to create a soft volume. the eyes are also in the shadow and I usually carefully look at the surface of the new applied layer and while I can see a red shine I can add a new shade there Even when I'm drawing the eyelashes and the volume of the lips, I'm still using my favorite large enough brush. 
because it's not time for the final details yet. But I'm um, refining gradually the shape of the nose, lips and eyes. And I'm trying do not focus too much anywhere, not to ruin the balance. I'm working on curls, but I'm trying not to add too many details because the main focus should be on the face. I'm adding the necessary details at the brows or eyes lashes to hair to the right side of the hair I'm working with the brush, gently touching the surface. You can see my round Chinese brush has flat form. And I'm forming this form when mixing colors on my palette. With this wide brush, I'm creating strokes that emphasize 
the shapes of the hair. For precise small details, I'm taking a thin synthetic brush. Oh, we need some tone there at the right. I think that a few more strokes and the watercolor is finished. You know, in watercolor painting, the main thing is to find the right moment to stop. And okay, the main theme, the signature. <laughs> and uh, you know, sometimes I don't know exactly what I'll done before the end of my work. So thank you for your time and for your interest uh, in my watercolors. And I hope to see you again. Goodbye.